Okay, first things first. Let me set my phone up here for a minute. Got to do something really quick. If I can get my stand out here a minute. There we go. All right, all right. Sorry about that. You're looking at the top of the popcorn machine. First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Voluminous 4K Screen Paint using the Ambient Light Rejection Technology Gain times eight. And as I mentioned in the title, this is something the gray screen can never do. This is a jet blue. As you showed you in demonstrations, when it comes to our technology, we produce images in, in fully lit environments. We don't have to worry about the screen washing out or fading. Over here, I got my tabletop screen set up in the kitchen. And got the projector set over here. I'm doing some work right here right now. Getting ready to start mapping out my plans for my arcade table. Um, I'm going to start ordering some parts and get that up and going. So I thought it'd be fun to set this up in the kitchen right now. But just look at it. Now we're going to do the demonstrations on the blue ocean because nothing fades fast. Environment than a blue screen. I thought I'd just do a really pretty ocean background on my 720p ultra short though sony projector usually when i do these demonstrations i'm upstairs but i decided to just do one downstairs in the living room slash uh gaming room there's your sony right there and that's 720p projector i think it's wxga at uh i think it's at um 3100 lumens let's look at the screen jet blue all the way across there's no tan, no browning out on the screen, none of that nonsense. So let's watch my tropical fish and show off the screen right here I'm working on right now. Now, once this is done, I'm gonna have, actually I gotta build a table for this. So I gotta build a table, gotta build a stand that's gonna be able to accommodate the projector. And then I'm gonna have to build, get me one of those small little set top uh, computers so I can actually hook up my um, Steam account. And then after that, I can actually have a tabletop uh, arcade system. And that's what I'm building. So this right here is plexiglass. The plexiglass is coated with the screen paint we developed. It's an invisible technology. Um, keep in mind our screen paints can be applied to just about any surface you want. Um, plexiglass, pretty much anything you think. But this is actually a screen that's actually, I think it's two feet by four feet. And as you can see, I left the borders Got a little frog tape and run around the edges and left the borders clear so I can have that nice clear border. But I think that this one right here, the next one I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the whole entire um, piece of plexiglass all together. But as you can see how the contrast levels pull up on the screen, looks absolutely amazing. And like I said, the projector I'm using. Now these projectors right here, this particular one, you can get them on eBay for around $60. I've seen a few of them today on there for $60. And those, some were actually open boxes, which means whoever had it pretty much just opened up the box didn't want it, sent it back, and those are a lot cheaper. That's what the um, Sony was, Sony was an open box. So, but keep in mind, these projectors don't have any form of HDMI outputs. I'm running this right through VGA, uh, right through the computer over there. I wish I had lighting right there, that'd be real nice, but this is all the lighting I have in the kitchen. I'm gonna show off some contrast levels. And I wanted to show off some white levels. There's Batman. And keep in mind, this right here now, the invisible technology allows you to be able to use like a mouse. You don't have to worry about scratching up the surface because there's a special coating in this formula that will allow you to be able to use this as a mouse pad too. So let me go over here. Let me see if I can come out of my menu real quick. And go over to exit right there. And we'll go over to, let's see. Um, they got a movie playing on here. I think they got a movie playing on here. Come out of here real quick. I think I'm gonna change my background to the yellow. Yellow car. I'm gonna set it to that one. Yeah, that's what I want. That's nice. Let's see, 
So you can use it as a mouse pad too. This is also fantastic if you actually want to upgrade your computer desk with this technology. Now keep in mind you have to use plexiglass. You can actually coat the desk yourself if you want to do it that way. I've done it before. I've actually coated a desk with our technology. Now see everything is nice and crystal clear. Now this is offline right now. I don't have this online. I'm just playing it basically from the, um, the computer itself. Uh, when I have time, I'm going to actually install in a Wi-Fi card that allowed me to make this wireless completely. But this one's too big on the project I'm building. So it's going to be a nice little size desk. I think probably about, if this is two sheets of this, this is two feet. So it'll be four feet by four feet. Yeah, it'll be four by four feet by four feet. Um, two sheets. I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, four feet by four feet. And I'm going to get, um, actually, I'm going to have to glue the plexiglass. I want it to be smooth. So I'm going to glue the plexiglass or epoxy it down to the table I'm building. And then underneath the table, I'm going to get me a nice smaller, a smaller computer, probably a little thinner than that. I'm going to connect this up under the table like so. So that stays with brackets. I can slide it in, keep it under the table. And then after that, I'm going to run some lead lights around the top of the table. And then for this contraption right here, I'm just going to build an extended bridge that comes out and it's able to fit this so it sits right there and it can project right onto the table. And I can just hook up my Xbox controller go on my steam account and just have some fun i might install in speakers too on, on that table too so i guess i'll start working on that project probably next week um let's see if we could uh i know i got a movie in here what movie do we have in here we got music oh cool we got music play some music we're gonna get visual effects i got my speakers over here visual effects. I want to see some visual effects on here. I want to have them. Play this for some. So... Trying to find the visual effects on here. I have, this is Windows 7. I haven't used Windows 7 in so long. There we go. I think this is it right here, I'm pretty sure. Do the bars. Let's change it over something else. Go to visuals. Let's put a... Uh... Ooh, we got a bunch of them here. Ooh, ooh, freaky circles. All right, freaky circles is pretty good. I want something really, really wild looking. Let's go with uh. Let's go into playing a movie. Let me see if we got a movie on here. I do like that visual effect. Let's even go back to that music real quick. Let's see if we can go back to music.
pretty cool. I'm gonna definitely have to get the computer run out on this one right here. So I have to get that car as soon as I can. Alright, let me come over here. I'm gonna pull up a movie real quick. So we'll drop this right here. I think I got something in the DVD player. I think I got over the hedge. I'm pretty sure I got something here. Let's see what we got going on. DVD, what's in here? Play this right here. Experts say that 73% of household accidents happen in one particular room. The bathroom. Be seeing you, my friend. <laughs> Have you seen my dad? <laughs> From the creators of Shrek and Madagascar. Screen. I'm gonna turn that down, it's kinda loud. The size of that monster. Yeah, pretty soon, I'm going to have my screen right out here. I can't wait. So what I got to do now is just build my frame for my screen right here on the deck. I'm going to get me a tension. I'm going to get a 120 inch tension screen for out there. And I'm going to use an ultra short throw for that one out there. I think I might get me another Optima GT56. I think that's what I'm going to do for outside. Because I need the ultra short throw outside because when I'm entertaining guests on the deck, kids, man, those jerkers are like all over the place. And if I put the projector behind it, behind me, it's going to be a 24-hour puppet show. So, and if I get a short throw, I still run the risk of one of them just bumping into and just nailing the screen, I mean, nailing the projector. So, I'm just going to get myself an ultra short throw. I'm going to get another Optima GT50. I'm going to get a 56 or 55. Where the heck is my freaking phone? I need the phone to change out the video. Can't locate the phone. Oh, here, it's right here. I love this freaking um, movie chairs. Oh, I love these things. Hey, it's my popcorn maker sooner or later. So let me see what we're going on here. So I think probably once the other projector, the parts for the other projector gets here, I can't wait to start playing with that uh, 1600, actually a 1500 Panasonic. I am going to be converting, once we first finish the first four tests on a Supreme 9, I'm going to be converting this into a Supreme 9 screen. Which, keep in mind it's called Supreme 9 or Ambient Light Project, uh, um, 9 Ambient Light Rejection, but there's no name on the screen yeah, like I said, the Supreme 9 and Supreme 10 are going to be a little different. The reason why there's no announcement on the official name is because we're in the process of actually copywriting the name. So the logos and all that stuff, yeah, all that stuff's going to be copyrighted. 
I'm spending a lot of money on these two screens due to the fact that they are way different than anything we've ever developed. As you've seen in that demonstration, that screen was constantly changing colors and it's a very interesting form of technology. I think it would be in my best interest to spend the money and just get it, get a patent, either get a patent or patent pending, but get something to lock it in. So right now I am working with a few lawyers on getting that screen locked. They will not launch until those patents or patent pendings are completed. Then we'll launch the product. And if you dare go tippy toe and mess with it, well, we know what's going to happen after that. I'm not going to play around with those screens right there. That that stuff right there is pretty interesting. All right, so I'm going to fish demonstrations here. Usually I don't do a lot of demonstrations on the big screen down. I come down here today and just play around with this screen for a little bit. I don't show up to Sony too much. And keep in mind, this is my 720p projector down here. Now, for anyone who's asking me about the merchant who sold me this projector, keep in mind, and people keep asking me, they're not going to be all 550 bucks. All right. I got lucky on this one because when I happened to go into his marketplace, he had an open box. I was kind of skeptical about buying open boxes sometimes, especially maybe that projector might not be in there. I might not get shipped the projector, but I took a trust on it. And I usually don't want to spend like 550 bucks to begin with on eBay. But I figure, you know, it's a Sony, might just take the gamble, and I'm glad I did. I'm really, really glad I took the gamble. But usually the projectors he has on there, and I'll post his link, but the projectors he, I, I, no, I promise before, I do apologize. But I will post his link. Keep in mind, the projectors are going to be like $1,500. You know what I mean? Sony's aren't cheap. They're really expensive, especially when they come in ultra short throws. And that's one of the ones I was really trying to get my hands on. I didn't care if it was 720p at all. All right, let's go follow through this. So what else we got going on here? And keep in mind, I think the settings, I haven't checked the settings on how big you can go on the Sony. I know it's over, I think it is over um, 100 inches. I think so, the Sonys can go over 100 inches. They can do about 130, 140 easily. One thing I like about this one over the Optima, this projector has lens shift, which is fantastic, which means I can shift it, move it back and forth. This is the first short throw I ever had with the lens shift capability on it. Can I get the, the other one, please? Thank you. I forgot where are my manners. I do apologize. I'm supposed to have the lights on. You see how much ambient light makes contact with this screen? A lot of ambient light hits the screen. One guy kept saying the screen was gray. No, it's not gray, it's black. Literally, that much light hits this screen that the screen actually appears to come off gray. They're black. I have a lot of light in my ambient environment. All this, all this right here, this is all being hit by all this light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this. What the heck is my phone? I keep losing track of that phone. I'm going to convert this screen into a 9. Probably I'm going to, I'm going to convert it before, the, before we patent it. Because nobody else will have it. I'm the only one who have the technology. So I might as well just convert it into a 9. Doing a movie over there at the same time. Let's see, create a movie. So look, I can use this as a mouse pad. It's not gonna scrape the screen up or anything.
Oh, come on, really? Seriously, with the phone? Uh, this is my old phone right here. This is what I stream through from time to time. Here we go. Now there's a few changes I'm going to change. But keep in mind, the invisible technology is not designed to be laid flat, okay? It's a pretty interesting kind of coating, but the uh, coating I'm going to be applying for the, um, for the tabletop is going to be a little bit different. It's going to cut down a little bit more glare. Because this is designed to be transparent. Oh, by the way, look at it when I move it away from the table. advancements of black technology but see check this out Here is transparent tech. So this, see, the invisibles are designed for light to transfer through them. So bottom line is, yeah, if, if you had a projector on top of it, it gives off an interesting effect. But the problem you'll have right there is you'll get a little bit of glare because it's designed for light to transfer through the screen. Where the other technology we developed, basically, what I actually, what I'm actually working on for my tabletop, it's not going to produce any form of glare, or whatever. It's just, it's going to cancel out any glare coming off the projector, much like we have when it comes to our, our projection screens. When we use 4300 lumen projectors, it's designed to cancel a lot of the heavy light that's going to hit the screen. That's going to cause the screen to give off a glare. These screens are designed to transfer light, so light is to transfer directly to the screen out the other end. So what it's doing is. Lights hitting the projector, it's transferring through the screen and it's bouncing right back up. That's why I can take an end, take this right here and take it off the table. And you can see the screen right here and I can flip it up. And you can see the image come right through the other end. Because it's designed to transfer light through. Now I'll do another one today. I got a couple of sheets of plexiglass downstairs. I'll do another one today and I'll um I'll show you um, the demonstration in and you'll see nothing come off the screen. It won't be to reflect any light whatsoever. So you want to see a lights out demo? No, no, I can't do lights out demonstration because I just put into the comments section about what what a gray screen can't do. Hold on for a minute. There you go. Stare at my screen. This makes it easier for me because I got you on the stand now. So now I can just put you anywhere I want. You can just check out the screen right there. Oh, uh, for those, those of you where I got the project cast, the, uh, the stars on the ceiling, I'll show you where I got it from. You can get them over at Amazon for a hundred bucks. It's not expensive. So it's called a star finder. A few people asked me about that in one of the videos about the projector I was using. This is a projector right here. If you're curious where to get it at, that actually casts the stars on the ceiling. Let me take the lights out for a minute here. So you can see what I'm talking about. They're about a hundred bucks. Actually, a pretty good one too. Because usually, other ones I saw, I just couldn't catch jack on the ceiling. Let me see right here if I can get this adjusted just right. I think I got it over here in the front. 
There we go. Get the blues a little better. And it moves. It moves. It has a little bit of a slight move to it, but it's really cool to look at. Let me see if I can get it adjusted a little better. There we go. So let me try to take out some more lighting in here because a little bit of lighting to get that to go off. Okay, here around the house. Here we go. Let me get this out. Oh, the wrong light. There we go. Take you around the house with me. Whee. Get this out. This one's big and bare. So it moves real slow. I'll get you up there real close to it so you can see for yourself. So it's around a hundred bucks over at Amazon. If you're curious about where to get it at, I'll put a link in there for you so you can check it out for yourself. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Let me see if I can get the blues to come up because it has a kind of like a blue kind of um uh, kind of Milky Way look to it. I can get that to come up a little better. There we go. There we go. There we go. I got to adjust a bit better. There we go. That's it right there. A hundred bucks over at, um, on Amazon. About a hundred bucks. No, oh yeah, Amazon about a hundred dollars. You get a couple of those. I would suggest. I'm gonna buy another one today because I just got one. One covers the ceiling that well. So I was kind of curious, what happens if I put three of them in here? Ooh, what can planetarium the day like that, let's believe. Let's put on a star field and check that out. We'll have a little fun here. Want to see some eye candy? Lights out on a Sony at 720p. That's what I told you. Sony projectors at 720p look better than 1080p, most 1080p projectors. Let's do. And this projector is nowhere near 4K. Let's get something with some deep space. Let's do a... Uh, Deep space screen, sir. So, uh, no, no, let's do the uh, star field. Let's do the star field. Bring it back a little bit. That way you can get a nice view at all. There we go. I think I got you in a nice good scene there. So we can get a good idea of the ceiling. Put in something a little bit more. That's too bright. That's going to take away from the lights. We don't want that much. That much. That's too much. Got to make it a little bit darker. A little bit darker than that. Too much light, and you're not going to be able to get that. That really, really strange. That really. That's what you want. The kind of dark atmosphere. No, not enough. All right, I'm gonna try this one right here. This should do pretty good. There we go. Or we can keep it realistic and we do this one right here. That's better. That's much, much better.
So what I'll do is I'll put a link in the video where you can get the star finder from on Amazon. They're about a hundred bucks. Don't pay any more than that because that's what I paid for mine. And they last a pretty good. I've had mine for about about three years. I've had mine for three years. For a minute. For a minute. I'm gonna look at this over here. I'm gonna go back over here for a minute. These two many people. Are with me? Just bear with me. We can show you something here. So there you go. Like I said, it's a gray screen paint mix. On a star field demonstration, on an ultra short though Sony projector. Look at that. Look at that. I want you to stare at this. See how much that takes away from your night sky. I'm going to turn out my uh, patio lights so we can get it nice and dark in here. And let's take out some of these. Uh, where are these coming from? Oh, there's the lights. Oh, that's not the right one. Okay, I'll take these off. Let's get it nice and dark in here. All right. Patio lights, nice and dark in here, and we'll drop some of this neon in here. Got a lot of neon in the house kicking off. Let's take some neon out. There we go. Drop some neon in here. So now we got it nice and dark. The only thing I have displayed, or if I go back, you'll see the only thing I have displayed. It's just the uh, the LED lights, the posters, not about the LED lights on the sofa. You can see that. I told you before that gray screens cannot pick up contrast at all, even on a starfield demonstration, even in the dark, even on a projected ultra short throw, it just can't pick up contrast. Get close to it. So you can see exactly what you're getting close up. All right, so now we've already established what they can do. Let's have some fun. No use in playing with this all day, eh? So let's bring this back. So you can see the beautiful stars on the ceiling. Is that beautiful or what? Now, like I said, that, that glow in the middle, that, uh, that, uh, that blue, it's best to get two of these projectors. Trust me, because it only expands, but so far out. I'm going to try to bring up the uh, camera so you can get a closer look at it. See how it moves? All those little stars move individually by themselves. And it's not a fast pace, it's a real nice slow pace. Just give you another point of view on how you can see things. can't achieve this on a gray screen. Now I wish I could paint the ceiling black. Oh, you have no idea how barely I wish I could paint the ceiling black. Because if I paint the ceiling black, all this is just going to come up even better. But I can't do that. I think, well, the house I'm actually looking at right now, actually buy, I'm thinking, I'm actually not thinking, I will be buying a much bigger house and I will be getting my first do, 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 my first dedicated theater room. I'm going to actually get one. I'm going to actually get one built. I'm going to help out with a lot of it, but I'm going to get one. I'm going to get one built. 
I mean a big one too. Probably something with his in her bathroom and a concession stand. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That's what I'm looking to do. All right. So let's bring up some other stuff we can watch. Real quick, there's some other visual effects. Oh, I still have work. So all these areas are black for backgrounds. You can't pick these up. None of this is going to pick up when I gray screen. And this is no 4K at all. The 720p ultra short though, 20 projector. This ambient light projection technology. That shows you how much light hits that screen. That's the screen gray. It's black. Yeah, I got a mind trip for you. Now I got to turn this down because last time I did this demonstration, the music had a tag on it so I couldn't touch it. This time I turned it down so that way I'm not playing the music. And this is how insane the color is. This is on an uncalibrated projector. The projector's never been calibrated. It's still sitting in the factory settings. Never changed it when I got it, took it out of the box, set it up, was done. the point in spending the money for 4k you don't need it you really don't you got to try this in vr in vr this is freaking trippy as i don't know what it is really trippy in vr I'm going to do the same video, like I said, in ultra short throw, in 720p.
see what I did with that. Anything that displays on the screen in black, on a gray screen, is going to come up in gray. Can't produce contrast. Any OLED demonstration that displays any form of background will automatically come up in gray. Even with the lights out. Can't pull it. You're going to pull bright colors. That's going to pop up. You just can't pull um, uh, uh, black levels. It's not going to pull up. So even on that dark scene, when you really think that you're getting, you're getting black, you're actually getting a shade of gray. You're not getting black. Why my all over here? So when you look at this screen, you're actually one hundred percent. And the screen kicks on in the white levels. Now you're seeing the black technology pull out of this white level capability. Now keep in mind, a lot of the demonstrations that were done on our technology were done in the dark, right? So the screen was so dark that even in the dark with the lights out, it couldn't produce a bright enough image, which you're not seeing that here. You're actually seeing the screen produce very bright images, even with the lights out. And we did it with the lights on also too, we did the fish tank. Now keep in mind the projector I have upstairs in my gaming room is 4300 lumens. This projector is 3100 lumens. And if you notice, when you look at ultra short though projectors, usually the projector is sitting right up, right against the screen. My ultra short though sits on the floor, about a couple of feet away from the screen and a couple of feet back from the screen. So it's projecting the image upward. So it still has to travel distance to the screen. Most ultra screen less than a foot away. Now I got to urge for some candy. So for those of you who have dedicated theater room setups, now you see what you're really getting off a great screen. There you go. They can't pull red. It's an ultra short though projector. It's literally sitting right. It's close to a lot closer than the uh, that forty three, and you can't see the color. Even in the dark, calibrate your screen. Let's try green. Let's do purple. Got purple coming up. That is a crying shame.
Let's see if we can do green while we're here. It'll pull white, trust me. It's gonna pull white. It just can't pull. Um, now, if I put a white demonstration on here, and I always do, it's gonna pull white regardless. It's just not gonna be of the full color. Like I said, white doesn't fade. You're gonna to have to worry about white fading. White's not gonna fade. Your problem, which you're gonna have to worry about, is your color's not coming up. That's the problem. So let's put white on, the Poopy Theory. That's white on the screen right there. Now, question, when you look at this, how is it that a screen that's gray can pull up a higher white level, but when it comes to color, the color comes out faded? Shouldn't the colors be brighter? That's, that's one of the things people put, put, say the most when it, when it comes to white screens. They'll say, well, because it's a white screen, it's going to pull up a much brighter image. No, it's pulling up a faded image. That's what you're getting. That's why when I change the colors over, the screen automatically, it fades. Let's go with uh, black. This is not going to go well. So I think we all know the outcome of this one. See, at least when you look at white on our screen, at least it does pick up a bright enough level. But on black, on a gray screen, it picks up nothing. Nothing at all. But at least if you look at the black screen when producing a white level, it picks up a bright image. But look at it when you actually transfer the image over to black onto a gray screen. It doesn't, it doesn't even turn gray at all, period. Speaking of gray, let's do this one too also. Let's pull up gray screens. Let's do a gray screen, gray screen, gray screen. We'll do different shades of gray. So first we'll start off with a kind of like a Kind of a lighter gray. Doesn't even pick up gray. How's the screen gray can't pick up gray? Up a a black level test, black level contrast test. We will bring up the OLED fish, which I like to bring up the OLED fish. Let's bring it back a little bit because we were just previously playing this video. Now, if those colors faded on those solid colors, it's going to do the same thing here on this demonstration with OLED. Like I said, any demonstration of lead, it's going to be black. Here comes the fish. And there's the washing out on the screen. I said backgrounds are always black on OLED.
the backgrounds. Concentrate on the blacks in the screen. Everything else will fall into place. And this is what I look at the entire time when I'm watching someone's demonstration. I'm watching every time the screen flashes to black or anything pops up, red, blues, greens, how fast the screen will fade. And just to let you know that if you ever have, ever has the opportunity to take your screen down to a test facility by a company, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. They're looking at that screen and they're looking for that contrast not to pull. It's not just his paint. It's any gray screen. Any gray screen is going to react the same way. Just like I did upstairs, I took the screen, I showed the way I I'll put that demonstration if you haven't seen it. Got went upstairs around 12 o'clock, opened up all my windows in my, in my gaming room, and put the camera at an angle and showed you all the screens to one hit. Every last one of those screens couldn't pull contrast. We were able to show a deep space scenery with that much ambient light in contact with the screen. All the screens were being hit with 4,300 lumens. There was no excuse. Let's do some fireworks. Knox, that was the name of, I can't figure the name of that freaking screen paint on Amazon, Knox, M-O-X, that's what it was. I gotta go order that. That's what I need to order, that Knox. Now, before we go down this road, because like I said, this is just regular paint. Let's get something. Little, let's go up I'm going to go get a leak back. I'm going to get the grace.
All right, we have the, so I don't want it to seem like, okay, it's just everyday paint. There's no challenge there, so let's put in something a little high end. Uh, for the fellow who messaged me just a few minutes ago, I only speak English. I'm so sorry. I don't understand your language. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to use Google. Google Translate's okay, but Google Translate, keep in mind, screws a lot of stuff up. So I, my English, I don't, I don't know that particular language. I do apologize. All right, that is a Dark Star 9 right there. Now, remember I told you about certain screens don't work with ultra short throw? Dark Star 9s don't work with ultra short throw. I'm just finding that out now. So that's something to know because that screen is dark and it shouldn't be that dark, which means it might not work with an ultra short throw. So that just tells me right there that I can't do ultra short throw demonstrations. I'm gonna try to move it about because sometimes with some of these screens, um, you have to have them in line with the projector. They have to be exactly in line with the projector or they go dark. So I'm going to try to move it around on the screen a little bit to see if I can get it to come up. If it doesn't, it means it's not ultra short though compatible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring it over here, maybe a little farther down near the bottom. I think that's working better there, right? All right, that comes up a little better right there. All right, so that's what I'm telling you, that with some screens... They have to be aligned with the projector. If they're not aligned with the projector, if they're a little too high up, a little bit over from left to right, what happens is the screen becomes dark. It has something called a narrow viewing comb, and it causes the screen to go dark. There you go. You see it? That's what they call the narrow viewing comb. That's why every time if you see me take my camera and I move it to the side, that's why. So in order for that screen to pull up, it has to be directly in line with your projector if it's not and it's a little off here a little off there that's why the um key st uh, that um what they call lens shift comes in handy because you can shift it in, in that place but if it's off by a little bit it'll turn dark some screens have that they, they have the ability. some don't work with ultra short throws all together and some of them become dark if you turn them off to the side now see how you can view the screen our screen right here this screen is supposed to have let me see what the angle gain on this screen is hold on for a minute the angle gain on the screen is supposed to be 180. That's yeah, a 180 degree viewing angle on that screen. So it's not doing 180. Maybe it, maybe this maybe it doesn't work with ultra. Maybe it's not at 180 on ultra short though. See, it's so many, it's so many ways that it could be. I have to do more research on this. There's so many ways the screen could be affected. Maybe it's ultra short though, it can't do 180 on it. Maybe, maybe do 180 on it. Maybe it can do a hundred inch. Or maybe you can do a direct contact in line with an ultra short throw, but maybe it might not be to do that 80 degree, 180 degrees on the short throw. So there's so many different ways that that could happen. So I'm going to show you here. We start at the bottom right here, and as the screen starts to move up, you're going to see it start to get darker. And we bring it down, and the screen's going to get lighter. So that means the screen has a narrow viewing angle. Usually screens that have a surface like this, I'm going to show you the surface first up close. So usually screens that have a surface like this, see how it looks this color and see how it turns dark? They have a kind of reflective kind of surface to it. So what happens is if, if the light is not hitting the screen correctly, if it's off by a little bit, it may turn dark around the edges. So this is stuff I figured out from doing a lot of research. You've got to do a lot of research on projection screens to see exactly how they react. Now, I do know for a fact that I think the Finity and Blade by DMP Supernova are not short though compatible. So keep in mind, not to put the company down in any way, if you were to spend $3,000 for the screen and you happen to have an ultra short throw projector, you would not be able to use it. You might not be able to use it to the fact that it could become dark on the edges from if you turn to the side. Our technology is ultra short though compatible, which means it doesn't make a difference. Any ultra short though projector you use, it's gonna pull up on the screen regardless, whether it's outside or inside. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, you can pay a lot of money just for an ultra short, ultra short though screen. Ultra short though screens are not cheap. They're very expensive. So it isn't like something you're gonna get, you know, for like two and 300 bucks. You're gonna pay a lot of money for that screen. So that's why I was curious when I put it up, it was kind of dark and I brought it up. But as you can see, see how it turns dark? Do this real slow. And this happens when the has, has a narrow viewing cone. So we'll bring it back a little farther here. I'd be fair on this. 
All right, I'm gonna walk in front slowly. And as you can see, the screen is gonna get brighter. Now if I were to lift up, get a better image if we lift up. See right here as I'm lifting up, the image gets a little bit better, it gets easier to see. So your projector has to be, imagine if my phone's your projector. You're, you're gonna to have to be in line with that screen in order to hit it just right. That's gonna be a freaking headache. I'm sorry to say, man, but I, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, I'm sorry. Not to disrespect your company anyway, but I couldn't do it personally. I'm not gonna sit there, it's bad enough, I gotta mount this thing to a ceiling, and I gotta sit there and I gotta adjust it just right to fit in there. So keep in mind, we're in a pretty dark environment right now. If there was any ambient light in the environment, that's definitely gonna play a part in basically disrupting the picture quality on the screen. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Now, see, I'm going to tell you a little, little, little something up real personal real quick. The reason why we had the incident with SL screens is because, just not, it's not saying too much, but you kind of get the gist of it now. All right. Just put it out there. That's why. When we're testing their stuff, we found out something. We, found out, we, found out, we always find out flaws in screens. We always find out. That's why you have to test your technology against high-end screens. Now, that's a dark star nine. Like I said, look it up for yourself. Price tag for that screen is three grand. I'm probably gonna get an email over this. I know it's coming. I'm gonna get a freaking email over this, but I didn't do anything wrong. You know, I just did side-by-side -side demonstration. All right, we have the Gray Cinema 5D. Gray Cinema 5D. This one doesn't have a reflective surface. Let me come here and show you the light real quick. So this one right here, doesn't have a reflective surface. Just, it's not gonna pull contrast too well, but it is, it has a, and it should have an 80, 80 um, viewing angle, 80 degree viewing angle at a 1.5, which isn't bad at all. Yeah, I know, you gotta, I'm looking at the same way you're looking at it too. Look at this. It's, it may not be, I have to look it up. It may not be ultra short though compatible, but it's kind of weird because like I said, as I move the screen up, as I move the screen up, it starts to brighten. So I got to adjust it just right. If I get it in that niche, in that area, it pulls up. So if I bring it here, it comes up a little better. See how it comes up a little better there. See right there against our screen. But we'll do the turn again. There you go. So I don't know, maybe it's designed. I gotta do some research on it first. I don't wanna to say too much. Do some research on it first and if I find out other people have had it and had the same issue, then we know. All right, so let's let's get the great Cinema 5D up here. This is a screen a lot of people have from the door. A lot of people have the screen. A few customers tell me they own the screen right here. Let's see how this reacts against the red. So we'll put this over here. It should do fairly well. It's about the same color as the uh, the screen paint mix. Oops, I bumped my projector. There we go. And we'll do the, the angle game. We'll go turn to the side and see what happens. Pull this up a nice image. So this one actually has a really good, good image from side to side. Has a good viewing angle. All right, as you can see. But still, it's not maintaining a deep, dark red because it doesn't have contrast. That's why. Uh, next one we're going to use is a Cinema Grade 3D over here. A Cinema Grade 3D we have by Elite Screens. I'm not just picking on Elite. I'm not picking them on any way whatsoever. I still have daylight screens coming in. And I do have a Firehawk G4. And there's another company I'm looking at. They have dark screens. I'm, look, I'm only looking at screens to get my hands on what are dark screens. There's no point in me going at the lighter screens because, well, I do lighter screens just to show you what you're not going to get from lighter screen. But to do a real competition side by side, I physically need a black screen to do it. And black diamonds aren't black. They're gunmetal. So um, that is a very tricky situation right there. I still want to see what the Slate 7 and Slate 8 would look like on a star field. All right, so Gray Cinema 5 3D, or Gray Cinema Gray 5D, I'm going to take it wrong the whole entire time. 1.2 gain viewing angle at 90 degrees, 90 degree viewing angle. So let's come over here. Okay, so again. Here we go. It's dimming in. My phone's dimming. It's going to save in mode. 
All right. I need tape here for this. I'm pretty sure if I bring down, if I bring down a DMP supernova, it's going to turn black. Because I think those screens are not ultra sure though compatible. I have one upstairs. I'm going to bring a sample downstairs and we'll put it on the screen. So we'll put this one right here at the bottom, the rose. All right. Oops, I'm bumping the daylights out of my projector. All right. So you can see right here, the Gray Cinema 5 3D actually produces a much, has a, it's a little darker. So that's why it's producing a better contrast image. And to tell you the truth, these aren't too far off right there. Well, let's turn to the side. See if it turns dark. Now, see, that's interesting. It improves in, in, in color as you turn to the side. See how the color gets deeper? But when I move around to the front, the color gets lighter. Let me figure that one out. That's very interesting, isn't it? All right, let me go get a, um, a DMP Supernova. I'm pretty sure the blades or the, um, I think it's the Blade or Infinity, should basically, I don't think they're all for sure they're compatible. So it may pull up, it may not. One screen. All right, so we missed another screen. We got a screen here by, oh, darn it, whatever. All right, we got a screen here I missed. So let me grab the screen also. Uh, we got a screen called a matinee. Now, those of you familiar, matinee blacks were designed by Seymour AV. Uh, he designed the matinee black. It's actually one of the darks that they developed. Um, usually, I'll show you in the light. Matinee blacks. This is the color of a matinee black right here. Right here. Same reflective material it has, but not as much as the other one. And the matinee black. Oh, my fault. My bad. Wrong, wrong, wrong one. Wrong one. Sorry about that. I got it mixed up. Kind of hard to get it mixed up, isn't it? Okay, so this is a matinee black here. This is a matinee black by Seymour AV. You'll see right there on the side. They always mark the emblem right there for matinee black. And then this one right here is a DMP super right there. So let's see. Let's do the DMP supernova first. All right. Let's do that one first. I got a funny feeling I'm going to get a lot of emails over this one. I know I said a lot, but I got a real weird feeling I'm going to get a, a lot of them. DMP Supernova. Now, this may not work on Ultra Short, though, just to let you know, all right? Because I don't think they're Ultra Short, though, compatible. I think they do go black if you hit them on an angle. All right, so I'll put it right there. And, yeah, judging by what I'm seeing right now, it pretty much, it's going to have that problem. So, Yep. It's not ultra sure they're compatible. It's not picking up anything at all, period. Not a thing. So that means it's not ultra short throw. Now keep in mind that some people say, well, it should be in the center. This is a projection screen. You should be able to stick that screen anywhere you want, all over this, all over the wall, and it should pick up anywhere on the wall. That's where Black Diamond got famous at. Because they would come on and they would take a sample sheet and they would just move it around on the screen. Anywhere that thing landed at, it would pick up. Yeah, we, we know that we know the deal of that one. So that's what made Black Diamond famous because you know at that particular time, the only white, the only gray screens they had at that particular time was Gray Wolf, and I think it was another screen, but most of the screens were white. So he was smart enough to come out there and take his sample sheet and move it around. And anywhere he put that sample sheet at, that image would blow up. So it doesn't make a difference if I put it here, if I put it here. We'll try to realign it so basically we can see what happens. But I don't think this is I don't think this is a, a screen that is going to be uh, ultra short though compatible um, no matter where I stick it. You see that? No matter where I stick it, 
it's going to come up dark no matter what. And that's because the screen is not ultra short though compatible. So these don't work at all short though. So we can't use the DMP supernova because it'd be unfair to say, hey, is your screen turned dark? It's going to turn dark. It's probably an ultra short though compatible. And I'm pretty sure if I look it up in their pamphlet, it probably explains that too also. So we're not going to use that. All right. So we know the Dark Star 9 doesn't do well on that. Let's go over and let's grab the Matinee Black, which is by Seymour AV, the darkest screen they developed. It's called a Matinee Black right there. And we got sample sheets that just want to, don't want to stay up there. Like, nope, 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 not today. I have to come off your wall. All right, come on, let's just get you to stay just for a little bit. Just stay for a little bit. All right, there we go. Let's go grab our Matinee Black. We'll put that in the same spot we had the, uh, the Matinee Black should do pretty good. Seam Ravy has pretty good screens. So we'll put that right there. The center, right there. All right, and let's come back and have a look. So I may have to adjust this one because it has a reflective surface. It ha may have to be adjusted. Let me move my, my camera up a little bit. There you go. I'm going to get a much better image if I just try to realign the camera with the screen. I have to bring it down a little bit. See how far we got to come down to get it to dark and just right. Uh, yeah, it's going to have to be a little higher up. So let me see from the side what we're going to get here. It's a little dark, but not bad. Not bad at all, to tell you the truth. I think I got pretty good screens. They do. Turn to the side here. Now, a matinee black would cost you probably somewhere between maybe two or three thousand dollars. Now, if you notice our screen, basically it's maintaining a red at an angle. In order to get the matinee black to come up the same color as ours, we would have to go all the way on the side to pull up the same color our screen is already pulling off. Let's go bring it up a little higher up. I'm going to bring it a little higher up. So that way I'm going to make sure and see what we do if we bring it up a little higher up. There we go. There we go. I told you they have real good screens. They do. They have good screens. I just got to bring it up. And I have to align it with the projector just a little bit. Just to get it in there just right. Because if it's too far down, it's going to become dark. It has to be aligned with the screen. There we go. That's a beautiful color right there. That's what we want. That's what we're looking for. All right, so let's see. We get a better shot here if we put it right there. I think the color comes up a little better. It comes up better on my hand. Look at this. That could be a projection screen. All right, there we go. All right, uh, we got that. Uh, next one, we have a, uh, this is another screen by, um, by Elite Screens. Uh, this is their uh, Cinema gray summer gray has a 1.0 gain 1.0 gain so this must be like a very low entry i don't know what's the problem with this with cost i know it's not white so if it's not white it's not, not gonna cheat usually the white screens are the cheap ones all right so let's put this one this is not going to make a difference where it goes because it's a lighter screen so we can put this one at the bottom right here i'm sorry if i move my camera to the side I forgot i'm holding the camera at the same time when I'm doing this. I do apologize. All right, let me move this to the side real quick. Ugh, my goodness, I just caught 3,000 lumens in the face with an ultra short throw. Oh, well, I'm going to be doing Stevie Wonder impersonation for the rest of the night. That was not a fun idea. I'm just trying to get these to stay because everything wants to just come off the screen. Just get to stay, 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 please just stay. Come on, we got to get better tape or better tape. All right, I think we should be good to go. All right. There you go. Now that's the cinema gray. Cinema gray right there. We'll turn to the side. There you go. So angle gain is a because it's a lighter screen. So that's what we're getting from there. Now let's grab my phone and let's see what we get when it comes we change these colors up. Alright. Let's go over to Blue. So we have the matinee black. It's producing good color. 
A little too dark, but we are producing good color. I'm not even going to bother putting up the um, Great Cinema, not the Great Cinema 5D, the, um, the uh, Dark Star 9, because that screen's automatically turning dark. So it's no point in putting that screen up there at all. Uh, let's pull up white. Now, if you notice, the matinee black came up darker when it comes to white levels than it does than our black screen. And the matinee black is actually lighter than our screen. So you figure that one out. That's a bit of a mind bender right there. The matinee black is actually a kind of, uh, it's not black. It's kind of a, a kind of a dark gray. So it's dark gray, but it's a darker white level than our screen. Now, I told you in the demonstration that any screen. Yeah, I'll have that information to you at the end of the video. Um, I'll post all my information. You can contact me through there and then um, I'll, I'll help you out with anything you need. So as we can see right there, so the matinee black puts up a good contrast. It just doesn't have a high enough white level. That's the problem we have there. All right. I think that one just quit for the day. But it just gives you an understanding. So let's pull up. We're going to do right now. Hold on before we start this. We're going to pull up the black field. So since the matinee black is pulling up a, um, it is pulling up a, uh, and it may not, and to keep in mind, also to consider the fact, it may not work well with short throw. It may have a problem with pulling up white levels on short throw, so that could be a problem too, that it could be having. None of these screens are going to have the ability to pull contrast. So I already know that from the door. Because any screen that's dark gray, any screen that's, even if it's dark gray, it can't pull up a black level. It's just not going to come up. If we go to the star fill demonstration, as you can see, it's not going to pull contrast, regardless. Now, like I said, the matinee black comes up pretty good on a long throw. It does. It comes up very good on a long throw. It may have an issue with ultra short throws. Some projection screens do have issues with ultra short throws. They have problems with short throws. They come up a little darker. So that could be the problem. So I have to look into that to see exactly how the screen is reacting. Like, do research. You know, check the specifications. If it says it doesn't work with short throw, then it doesn't work with short throw. It has no business being up there. So for right now, I'm going to remove the matinee black off because the complications it is having with the short throw. I have tested the matinee black on a long throw projector and it came up fantastic. So the fact that it is coming up having some difficulties here, I'm not going to even use it because it's unfair. it has a narrow viewing cone or maybe it does not work with ultra short throws now this screen right here is a this just actually I shouldn't be saying this but this used to be an elite screen the screen I have right now is actually is an elite screen I actually coded it with their technology so this screen right here is 126 edgeless and was not going to use a white screen so I coated it with a Supreme 8. So this screen right here if you were to paint this would probably cost you for two quarts Now before we go into a frenzy by saying oh my god that's a lot of money paint consider the fact that we had a three thousand dollar screen sitting up here we had a DMP over that came in at five thousand dollars and then the rest of these screens up here well they're not they're going to cost you somewhere in the price range of maybe $1,100, $1,200, maybe $1,300 just for a 100-inch when 
two quarts of our technology will paint a screen size of 100 inch up to 150 inch at 16.9 to 16.10 and 235.1. And it's ultra short though compatible. These screens right here, I can't take commissions because they're not designed for outside, they're designed for indoor use. I would have to go near at least yard master in order to do the demonstration outside. So if you bought this screen, you're not taking it outside. It's going to stay inside your living room, which you probably plan to do anyway. But these screens, you can paint one inside, you can paint one outside. It's up to you. That's why I have a bunch of screens sitting in my backyard waiting for summertime. Woo! Can't wait for that. That's going to be fun. But like I said, you get when it comes to our technology, you can't just go out and say, hey, you know, you're charging too much. You have to be able to show the price worth of your, of your product. You know what I mean? The fact that I can walk around my living room in a fully lit environment, watch a football game, and I don't have to worry about the screen ever washing up and fading. So hold on for a minute. Let's get to that real quick before I sign out of here because I got to get some meat. I am really, really freaking hungry. I didn't eat anything all day today, which I got to start eating more, which I don't. Let's go to NFL highlights. I like to do the NFL highlights on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take out, take these off because we don't need these anymore. And that's why I said when it comes to um, screen paint mixes, you don't, the screens have, they don't really do any tests. All they do is do a dark environment and they show a high power projector, 4K projector, and they just show you how magnificent the screen looks. And you don't consider the projector to work. So, you know, money, they, they can spend for, for projections. But you know, they come and ask me, what's the difference between me spending five grand for your screen? Or me just going and buying your screen paint altogether. So let's come over here and let's just bring up a football game. You know, because we're watching a football game. We're going to be doing this with the lights on. Right? You don't want to be sitting in the dark watching the game, correct? So you should be able, in your environment, be able to walk anywhere you want. And that screen should pull up. Come way back here. I'm hit my lights. I want it nice and bright in here. Anywhere I stand in that environment. Now keep in mind, like I said, some projection screens are not um are not um they don't you can't use angle gain. They have now viewing combs, so you can't sit here and look at that screen because that screen will turn dark on you. That's why you see me walking around the environment to show you that that screen will pull up anywhere you stand. Because can you imagine spending $5,000 for a projection screen and if your guests are watching the game and one of them just happened to do this, that screen's gonna turn dark on them. They can't even see it. You have to be standing right directly in front of it to see it. I had to clean this kitchen up too for wife to get home. I'm like, what the freak are you doing now? Like, what am I not doing? What am I not doing? I'm right over here by the refrigerator. Right here by the refrigerator. Put my stand right here. Just imagine that this is you right now in my house watching the game with my family. We can be sitting there having a conversation about I don't know what, and we can be watching the game right here. All right. Got my sitting area right here. I can have guests sit right here. Anywhere you move, that screen is supposed to pull up. I'm gonna walk down here for a minute. You can be over here by the fish tank. Now, I know the Eagles are not going to be in the in Super Bowl this year, but I don't care. I'm still going to have a party. I'm not going to broadcast it because I don't do that. But as you can see, you know, when I have a house full of guests, that they can walk anywhere they want in the house, and they can still see that, still see that screen from anywhere in the house. Let's go over here to the staircase. I'm coming down the stairs. I'm just pretending that you're me. I'm coming downstairs. Do, do, do. I'm just 
lean your head over to the side. I'm like, okay. Whoa! Yeah, that's me falling down the stairs. <laughs> that's me falling and doing stupid something stupid. That's you. That's me falling. So just lean your head to the side and see the game from here. Over here. As for the blooper reels, enjoy it. Hope you wasn't eating anything. I had to choke on their food while I'm doing dumb stuff here and tripping down the stairs. I just want to give you an idea that when you walk around your house, that screen should pull up. Oh, as a matter of fact, these lights are supposed to be on too. Sorry about that. I missed these lights in here too. It's supposed to be lighter in here. See how well lit? This is what I'm talking about. When people do demonstrations, you should be to see. I got to get another light here because I don't know why the hallway, we have light in the hallway, but it's always dark in that one little area. That drives me crazy. I do not like to be in the dark. See how well lit the environment's supposed to be. Ah, oh, ha, ha, ha. Not my team, I just like to watch. I wonder. Out of curiosity. I can't wait. I'm going to put a 120 attention screen right there. That's my next screen going. Lost connection there for a minute. I was curious to see if I could go outside, I could watch the game from outside the deck. So, just kind of curious. I don't know why. Yeah, I'll put you down for a minute. I'm pretty sure you're tired of going around the house with me all day. Enjoy. So uh, when the video ends, I will put all my information at the bottom. You can email me. Um, I'm still going to be up tonight because I'm going to be up. I'm not going to be going to sleep tonight. I got to be up tomorrow morning. My uh, lamp gets here for the Panasonic projector. I got to put that together and do a demonstration on that. That's that 1500 uh, lumen projector at 1600 lumens or 1600 uh, contrast. 601 contrast. So I have to do the demonstration on that one. So, if you're overseas, it'll be a good time to contact me tonight because I will be up. I got a lot of work to do. Um, and then on top of that, I'm going to be doing demonstrations tomorrow. If all goes well with that projector, because I need that projector to do the demonstration. If all goes well, I'll be to do the first video demonstration on a Supreme 9 tomorrow. If the ball works, which I hope it does. If not, I'm going to have to order another one because I did get it from another merchant. But I'm hoping that this one is legit and it does work. All right, hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. I have to go. Thank you all for your time. God bless.